Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Warriors Fast Break here on HBC TV 25. I'm Justin Barrientos. Thank you for joining us. We'll start off this week with uh, women's basketball head coach Scott Ballard joins us. And uh, a split this weekend. Uh, let's start with the Sioux Falls game. Uh, another close if game. Must. If we must. Yeah, let's get that out of the way so we can yeah. talk about better things. But uh, it's always tough between you guys and Sioux Falls, and uh, this time you fell on a, on a last-second layup. Well, you know, it's three years in a row at their place. It's been a one-point game one way or the other. And, uh, you know, we did not play a very good first half, and Han McGlone uh, only played nine minutes because she got her second foul. Um, we were down six at halftime. Uh, second half, we played much better, um, especially offensively. And um, actually had a nine-point lead with 3.40 to go, mm -hmm. but... Uh, then we had a few empty possessions where we either missed a shot or uh, you know took a, a low percentage shot. Um, they got a couple, they got a couple runouts or dribble drive opportunities and chipped away at it. And then uh, you know with 5.4 seconds to go, we had the ball on the sideline with a one point lead, and we ran uh, a couple sideline plays to get the ball in bounds and. Uh, had to call timeout, maybe both, no, one time it got kicked out of bounds. The second time we called timeout to avoid a five-second call. Mm -hmm. And then we uh, ran a third different um, sideline play that involved uh, a screen, a post screen for the point guard to uh, free them up. But uh, unfortunately, we got called for an illegal screen, mm -hmm. so we don't get the ball in bounds. No time comes off the clock. We don't get to shoot any free throws. They get the ball. Uh, a sideline, and uh, we called timeout. We knew exactly what they were going to run, who they were going to ball to, and we had a foul to give. And um, and we, we we told told our team, you know, it's like we're going to foul her, you know, when she gets close to the three point line. Um, and sure enough, we they ran the play. They got to the person we, you know, uh, told our team that they would, and we did foul her. But they didn't call it, and so then it turned her loose. And give her credit, she went in and, and finished a layup, and we end up losing a one-point game. So it, it it stings. It'll sting for a long time. You can't have it back. But uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of lessons that we learned. We learned how important it is, uh, no matter how intense the situation is, uh, late game situation, uh, on the road. Um, tight, close game, you, you have to really slow down and pay attention to executing things. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's two-way street there. You know, the screener, it, it, if the person who's cutting uh, does not wait on the screen, the screener's got to let her go. Mm -hmm. uh, but the person that's cutting, you need to set it up and wait for the screen. Um, you know, so we learned that valuable lesson. We also learned how to foul, um, yeah, you know, that is a foul at any other part of the game. What we did is called all the time. But uh, in that situation with just five seconds to go, the officials, you know, sometimes they, they, they don't want to determine the outcome of the game by calling a ticky-tack foul. But um, anytime you hand check the ball handler, put two hands on them like we did, that is usually an automatic foul. But, uh, but we're going to practice on how to foul the ball handler today. So I, I don't think I – th I think in all my years of coaching, I don't think I've ever lost a game that way. And so it, it's, it's hard for me to deal with. Um, but at the same time, you know, our players that have went through that now, that is burned forever in their memory bank. Mm -hmm. And I – I'm not a prophet, but I would, I'd be, I would be really confident to say, I bet we don't ever lose a game like that again that way. So um, there's a lot of valuable lessons to learn from it, and, uh, and and I'm proud of our team for how we got ourselves in position to win that game. We mm -hmm. had to do a lot of things right. Um, I'm also proud of how we responded the next night, uh, coming off of a heartbreaking, gut wrenching, uh, one point loss basically at the buzzer to uh, bounce back and 
on the road and win again the next night. Yeah, and it was kind of a similar type of situation where you had a lead and kind of slipped it, but you, you end up winning yeah. by two. Well, we were up four at halftime at Southwest and um, got the lead up to 22. They got it down to four. Um, we got it up to nine with like a minute to go, and the most bizarre thing happened uh, that I've never witnessed again. They scored 10 points in 32 seconds. Oh, my goodness. Um, they got the... They got the ball, they made two free throws, you know, without a clock running the course. Then they got a, a put back, and then they hit two long, ridiculous threes. But uh, they're, much, they're much improved. They're really dangerous, especially at home. And uh, they hit 10 threes Friday night against Upper Iowa and then hit 11 against us, six of them in the fourth quarter. So um, we, we're going to address some things. Uh, we've kind of had a, a trend now where we've had big leads in like four games that we let get down to single digits, and some of it is mental toughness, some of it is some people get timid, some people try to do too much, they're both counterproductive. So uh, it, it's a part of the maturation process, and, uh, but it, it's good for us to go through it. That, that's the best way to learn. All right, just about a minute or so left in the segment this weekend, then is uh, your first home conference mm -hmm. doubleheader against Minnesota State and Concordia. Um, what do you do uh, to, to get ready for these games this weekend? Well, I mean, you, you use a couple days of preparation for each one. Um, both teams are talented, very athletic. Concordia has a leading scorer in the league, and, and Anna Schmidt averaging 24 a game, most dynamic guard that I think I've seen in our league in, in 10 years. Um, uh, Mankato is always athletic and talented. They got a lot of people that can score. They beat us here last year. We, we end up splitting with both those teams. Um, you know, they, they've had to deal with uh, some serious injuries to multiple people on their squad here early season, which has kind of uh, set them back a little bit. But, um, you know, they're, they're both dangerous. Uh, you know, I, I think, you know, one thing that I think, I hope that our, our new team is learning, especially from this past weekend, um, how hard it is to win conference games, how mm -hmm. tough they are. They're a grind. And also how quickly a big lead can dissipate. So you, you just got to keep doing the same things that got you the lead. You got to understand when you get people, people down, you know, 20 points, uh, it's not going to get easier. It's going to get harder. They're going to start playing with a sense of urgency, they're going to start a, a attacking you, they're going to extend their defense, they're going to uh, get more physical on the boards and, and you know, with ball pressure and, and uh, you know, so it's just something that you've got to understand. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm, I'm confident that, that we're learning that. Sometimes you have to learn the hard way. And yeah, we'll, we'll see yep. you we'll see you this yep. weekend if that yep. if that goes. So you're going to take a break here on Warrior Fast Break. When we come we got back, we'll get the player perspective. Ellie Pickering will join us right after this. What's a Southern girl? It's waking up before the sun rises. It's loving the simple things in life, like the dirt roads that lead you home. It's working hard to get what you want. It's hanging your own stands, breaking your own ground, and strategizing every little move for that one moment when everything you've worked for is standing right in front of you. Even if I fail a million times, I keep pushing myself till I'm exhausted, filthy, and about to give up. And that's when the adrenaline hits. In this arena, nothing comes easy. We come at you like a freight train. Here, we put it all on display. Nothing but sidestepping, high-flying, over-the-top action. And this is where tradition, pride, and determination all come together. Big East, Pac-12, and now Big Ten on Fox and FS1. And welcome back to Warriors Fast Break here on HBC TV 25, now joined by Allie Pickering. Allie, join, thank you for joining us here today. Uh, I want to ask you a little bit, first of all, thanks for coming in during finals week. Uh, I know that this is uh, kind of difficult for everybody, but maybe the newness of college has worn off for you, but now you have basketball thrown into all your classes and finals coming in. How are things going in school? Uh, I'd say it's going pretty well. I mean, you learn to balance things pretty quickly, but yeah, first finals week, it's a little bit stressful, but uh, good thing our coaches are very nice to us with our <laughs> scheduling, and it's kind of this week is a little bit different since everyone's schedules are different. So it's, it's nice that we have a little bit of freedom to choose when we go in and lift and 
work around our schedules. All right. Now you heard Coach Ballard talk about the games this past weekend and how lessons may have been learned uh, for you as a freshman. You know, what, what was the, this weekend like? Um, I learned a lot. Uh, Coach told me after our first weekend of games in uh, Quincy that every game I was going to learn something, and I think I learned something for sure. Uh, important things this weekend after every game, like Sioux Falls, how to foul or when. Uh, you need to like make different decisions like that. Also, uh, boxing out, I learned <laughs> for this last game. I know that I don't think I'll ever miss a box out again after this next practice. Oh, you'll, miss, you'll miss one, you just won't uh, miss as many. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure, but I, it's a learning experience. Like you said, I don't think we're ever gonna lose a game like that again. I for sure won't make the same mistake again. I hate losing, so <laughs> I will not make that mistake again. It's been a tough stretch for our team. Uh, it's three weekends in a row that we've been on the road. Mm -hmm. So uh, I told them we got back the other night. Good news, ladies. We don't get on a bus for a month. <laughs> so uh, it'll be good to be home this weekend. But, you know, they got a lot on their plate, you know, with finals this week. Sure. And uh, practices will be a little shorter. Um, we'll try not to over, overload them with much uh, mental stuff. But um, we're, we're going to work on things uh, today that uh, we, we struggled with at times this weekend. All right. Well, so do you have any free time this week? I mean, what does your schedule look like for those that may not know quite what the grind is? So it's actually, uh, I have more free time than I would on a regular schedule because our, we don't have our classes. We mm -hmm. only have our finals. So I didn't have any finals today. So today was more of like an open day for me. And then I'll have a final tomorrow and two on Wednesday and then I'll be done for the rest of the week so be, it's a pretty nice schedule get some rest in between there. All right I want to ask you about the uh, transition from the high school game to the college game because on our first show of the season we, we talked about you a little bit and, and I asked coach Ballard if he was surprised at all about how successful you've been in your freshman year and he said no we knew what we were getting are you surprised at, at how successful you've been able to be? Um, I wouldn't say surprised it's been different for sure uh, going from playing halves to quarters mm -hmm. and just the intensity of the game um, I didn't know exactly what to expect coming into college but I think that it wasn't that hard to adjust especially with my teammates and I know our, se our lone senior Hannah McGlone has really helped me transition um, from high school to college and so it's been nice to have their support with all that. I think as far as the game uh, is concerned, the biggest adjustment for them from high school to college is probably more on the defensive end of things. For Would you sure. agree? Mm -hmm. So You're not just playing. In high school, there's a lot of those players that are just kind of one-dimensional, mm -hmm. and they, they play a role really well, but in college, you're getting the best of the best. Like, not everyone's playing college basketball, so you're getting the better side of what you would see in high school, so it's, it's different for sure. All right, last question I have for you is just to look back in your high school career and I want to see what maybe your, your best memory is of high school because at Eastview, I think you made state every year that you were there and I think the team made it like two years even before mm -hmm. you got onto the varsity team. Uh, what was your best memory at Eastview? Um, my best memory would probably be winning a state championship is pretty awesome. I was a freshman that year mm -hmm. so I did not get a lot of minutes at varsity at all. Um, but just that feeling was pretty awesome, but the state tournament's always a really cool experience, and even though my last two years it didn't go the way we really wanted it to, it was still uh, a really good feeling to get there with your team. It was probably section championship my senior year when we won. That was probably my best memory because I was with all my friends, and it was just it was a really good time for us. All right, very good. Well, thank you again for coming in this week, yeah, and uh, good luck the rest of the me. season. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a break here on Warriors Fast Break. When we come back, we'll talk men's basketball with head coach Todd Eisner. That's right after this. Looking for Hewitt. No Did way. Did he make that catch?
with technology. It's supposed to make our life easier, but sometimes the simplest of devices can cause some pretty complex problems. Computer viruses, connection issues, even remotes. Don't freak out when you're in need of technical support. Geek out with HBC Wizards. From general service questions to computer care repair, call us 24-7 for local assistance on your schedule or visit your local office for convenient drop-off and pickup of your tech gear. Visit hbci.com forward slash wizards to learn more or call 888-474-9995. And welcome back to Warriors Fast Break here on HBC TV 25. Time now to switch to men's basketball and head coach Todd Eisner joins us. Thank you for being here again. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk about this weekend's games. I know they were kind of disappointing for you. Um, I know that on social media, uh, one of the things that you talked about was defense and how hard it is uh, to win in the NSIC if you don't play defense. And so it, was that the message then to your team this week? Well, I think an extended period of time uh, to play defense at a high level. You know, we uh, defended really well in the first half on Friday night at Sioux Falls and led by two at the half and, and led by six with about uh, 17 minutes to go in the second half. And then, you know, kind of the floodgates opened up. They went on a 19-4 to run and we really never were able to get control of the game again on the defensive end of the floor. And so, you know, that was really the message Friday night and then unfortunately ended up carrying over a little bit into Saturday also. Is that still uh, to some carryover from having so many post players that have been injured and, and trying to come back? You know, I think every game's a little bit different because every team's going to have a little different uh, characteristic in terms of where they score. Um, you know, Sioux Falls has two of the more talented offensive players in the league, and Evans on the perimeter and Drew Gieber's just unbelievable as a 6'9", kind of a combo forward that can knock down threes, can post you up, can drive the basketball. And, um, and, and then, you know, their point guard, Zach Wessels out of Austin, did a really nice job in that game and really got to the hole. He was 7-of-7 seven seven from the floor, so that made a huge difference. Uh, uh, Saturday night, Ryan Brueggemann's, you know, top three players in the league and preseason player of the year in the South, and, and he played like that in the second half. We did a great job on him in the first half, and, and he really took over the game in the second half and got them a lead, and, and, and unfortunately we, we showed some, uh, some good character and some good toughness by battling back and really had a chance to, uh, to win the game in the last minute of the game. All right, yeah, we'll uh, talk about uh, the second game, but I, I want to get back to Sioux Falls for just a second because uh, in looking at the stats, uh, Sioux Falls uh, did a good job on rebounding and also it was points in the paint. I, I think yeah. that really kind of drove them in that game. How do you address that as the season goes along? Well, and their, their points in the paint didn't really come off of post up, so it wasn't really a, a, a bigs issue that we got hurt uh, there. You know, as I mentioned, Zach Wessels, their point guard, was seven of seven from the floor. They were all layups, so we didn't do a great job in there. Uh, kind of their handoff situation, and they got to be downhill and turned the corner, got in the paint and finished plays. Evans did a couple, a couple of nice moves in the second half that, that put us back on our heels and allowed him to get to the rim. So uh, their attacks came perimeter to the rim, and so our ability to fight the dribble, our ability to communicate, our ability to, to, to help each other wasn't as good as it needed to be. It was really good for about 23 or 24 minutes, and then when they got on a roll, we had a hard time stopping them, and anytime you allow a team to shoot 53% in the second half, uh, you know that some bad things are happening and they did a nice job to counter that of defending us and we shot 35% for the game So when you combine those two things uh, mm -hmm. It led to a 16-point loss. Okay, so what was your message then to the team from Friday to Saturday? Uh, you know, I know that's a quick turnaround mm -hmm. uh, You got little travel to do and then you got to play a game right away So what was the preparation then for Southwest on Saturday? Well, you know, you've got to turn the page quickly You know, and you can't uh, you can't get caught up in playing poorly on Friday night and let it hang over You know into Saturday and vice versa if you have a great win on Friday night You got to be able to bring that same intensity that same focus that same efficiency back uh, to have a productive weekend if you try to win two. So in, in this case, obviously, we didn't play as well as we wanted. We did some really good things defensively for 24 minutes. We needed to clean up some things offensively. Anytime, like I said, you lose, shoot 35% for a game, you gotta, you're going to have a hard time winning. Um, and so our, our message was we got to extend our defensive effort for longer than 24 minutes and, uh, and then clean some things up offensively, and I felt like we would have a good chance. It seemed like the uh, Southwest game in the, in the write-up, it was kind of a back-and-forth type of game. So both teams were kind of making adjustments and, and trying to counter the other team. Is that kind of the way that game went? Yeah, you know, again, we, we started out uh, well, and you know, we led for the majority of the first half and, and took an, another halftime lead into the locker room. And then the second half, we, we, you know, we didn't really allow them to get away. I think it was still tied with about 10 minutes to go, and then they made a little run late in the game, got up eight. Then we chipped away at it and got it back down to one with a minute to go and needed one stop. 
and, and unfortunately we didn't get the stop. And, and as I mentioned, Ryan Brueggemann kind of took over the second half. We held him to one basket in the first half. He's finished, I think, 7 of 12 from the floor and made all of his free throws. So uh, when, when your best player and one of the best players in the league can, can take over a game and score 24 points, uh, that makes it really difficult. And unfortunately, we didn't do a great job uh, overall in the second half defensively either. I guess that kind of leads into kind of a philosophical question uh, for me. If you have a player that's a dominant player overall, would you rather have that or would you rather have kind of what your offense is, which is distribute the scoring between a lot of different players? I think almost all of your games you've had four or five players yeah. in double figures this, this year. What's your preference in that? I, I think it's difficult to prepare for a team when you've got multiple weapons. Um, when you've got a, a player like Ryan Brueggemann, it, it gives you a, a great cushion. It gives you a great ace in the, the back pocket to, to unleash on, on teams on a, daily, on a daily basis. But I think when you have great balance and, and, and it's hard to scout teams because you put yourself in a position where if I want to take away A or I want to take away B, hopefully C, D, and E can have the, the good nights because you're not paying as much attention to them. Mm -hmm. So the more balance that we have, I think it puts us in a position uh, to have success. It's, it's great to have that one guy, or if you have two guys that can go get you 25 on any single night, that certainly solves some problems on nights baskets aren't falling. And then uh, Saturday, your guest today, Caleb Wagner, had 12 points, which is season best for him. So now he's kind of added into that mix of the scorers for you. Well, Caleb's a guy that uh, you know, comes to work every single day. He's got great toughness. He's got great leadership skills, which goes back to you know, his high school days. I think we talked about that last mm -hmm. year with um, you know, being the point guard on his high school team and being the quarterback on his football team. And, uh, but his work ethic is tremendous, and uh, he puts himself in a position to be successful, and he had a really good night Saturday. All right, coming up, uh, your first home conference doubleheader uh, this weekend against Minnesota State uh, and Concordia St. Paul. Um, how do you match up against those two teams? Well, I think it's a big weekend for us. I mean, a 22-game conference schedule, you'd hate to say three games into it, it's a big weekend for us. But, you know, we did enough good things to feel good about our possibilities, our potentials moving forward but we can need to reward ourselves. You know, we can't keep saying, well, we're playing hard and we're playing well for 25 minutes and just not good enough. We need to play hard, you know, well and play hard for longer periods of time and reward ourselves with a, with a win in the league. And the other thing we've talked about now for a couple of years, we haven't been as good as we need to be at home. And uh, you know, teams that want to be legitimately considered one of the better teams in the league protect their home court. And this is a great way to, to start the NSI season at home. Uh, hopefully with a couple of wins. And then uh, what we were talking about last week was uh, the health factor for your guys. How many guys you're, you have suiting up and how many options you have coming off the bench? How is that going? Uh, it's, it's, it changes every day. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's just the life of college basketball. We had nine guys that we took on the trip. Delonte Payton was sick and wasn't able to make it. Uh, so we had nine guys. Chuck Coons still struggling with the ankle a little bit. Uh, uh, this was the first time he had to play back-to-back -back nights. And uh, it just, you know, it gets loosened up and he feels okay, but anytime he sits for any ex extended period of time, it's really hard to get it kind of loosened back up again. Um, so we're working on that. Tommy seemed to feel pretty good. Uh, so we're, we're pleased so far and optimistic that the cortisone shot has uh, minimized and maybe even eliminated some of the back issues he was dealing with, and hopefully that can stay the same. For Tommy, is that going to be the only cortisone shot? Is he going to have to have some more later on? Hey, we should have some in our back pocket for every game <laughs> in case we need to because he's shooting the ball really well, you know. But uh, we'll see. You know, we hope it's the last one. You don't want to get too many cortisone shots mm -hmm. there. You know, long-term effects aren't, aren't great, but mm -hmm. uh, cer certainly right now it seems short-term. It's helped him a lot. All right, we're going to take a break here on Warriors Fast Break, and when we come back, we'll talk with Caleb Wagner that's coming up right after this. This is how it is. Get right to it. Start your game day with Game Day Morning, football's first pregame show every Sunday, delivering Hall of Fame commentary, matchup analysis, and live reporting from every game all season long. Imagine streaming your favorite 4K Ultra HD movie with no buffering or pixelation, even when your kids are gaming in the next room. Better yet, experience it with unlimited internet data usage and the fastest speeds around. Whether you're an occasional video snapper or a full season streamer, HBC can take you into the next generation of possibilities. Visit HBCI.com to learn more or call 888-474-9995 to sign up for fast, limitless internet. And welcome back to Warriors Fast Break here on HBC TV 25. Caleb Wagner now joins us. Thanks for coming back here. No problem. Uh, let's talk a little bit uh, about how the season is going, and, and especially this weekend. You heard what Coach Eisner had to say about the games this weekend. Uh, from the players' view, uh, how do you feel the team played this weekend? 
Um, I agree with Coach Eisner. I think we definitely showed potential on certain things defensively. Uh, both games, kind of the first half, we did what we needed to do on defense, and then we just need to extend it for longer periods of time, like he said. And I mean, that's, I mean, with our individual battles on a player, and that's collectively as a team talking, communicating with screens, and backside help just needs to get better for a longer period of time. All right. Now, as uh, Coach said, you know, last year when you came on the show, we talked about the transition from high school to the college game and narrowing down your three sport abilities to just basketball. So that's what you faced last off season. Coming into this off season, what were some of the things that you did to get ready for this year? Uh, this off season, since you kind of know, like offensively and defensively, the expectations, you kind of try to build off that what what you learned as a freshman, and you try to kind of in a way perfect what you're trying to do so my my goals this off season was to try to focus on talking more defensively and kind of being a leader defensively to help other guys with whether it's backside or talking with the big to get back when I get back on a screen and then offensively just skill work individually that'll help the team as a whole so ball handling and then just kind of knowing the offense and then shooting, obviously, being able to knock down open shots, which will just help the team as a whole. All right. Is there any messages that you give to players uh, as you head to the, the next offseason and things to work on? Uh, yeah, I think each guy is obviously different, but uh, you certainly have a plan in place overall. I mean, for us, and we, you know, we're doing a great job of shooting the ball from the three right now, and I think our guys have put in a lot of time shooting the basketball in the offseason. We started a Warrior Shot Club in the fall, and uh, you know, I was a little worried about how we were going to do in the classroom. Uh, because so many of our guys were in the gym all the time. And Caleb's one of the leaders of that. I mean, Caleb's work ethic will never be questioned. Uh, his, his toughness will never be questioned. Uh, he's doing the right things at the right time uh, for the right reasons, you know, pretty much every day. And that's why he's always going to put himself in a position to be able to help us. Um, and so, uh, you know, we don't worry about uh, Caleb's uh, you know, desire. We don't worry about any of his preparation. Uh, we just want him to go out and help us play, and he, he's willing to do whatever we need him to do, which has allowed him to play some point and some off a little bit this year. And uh, Saturday night he played probably as much off guard as he did uh, point guard for us and had a really good game. All right, so how do you balance everything? As we said in the earlier part of the show, it's, it's finals week, and, and you have to balance all that, including your final exams and then getting ready for, for this weekend. How do you make sure that you have time for everything? Uh, for me, I just kind of make a schedule. Kind of like when I wake up, I kind of figure out when's practice and when I can get extra shots in and when I can figure out what times to study and stuff. But I mean, throughout the year, you kind of have to do that. You kind of have to base your day around your classes and practice and figure out when the extra shots can come or the extra skill work and then the extra uh, studying that you have to do constantly for class. So just like for me, it's just making sure I have a plan down in place pretty much every day so that I know what I'm going to do and how to be successful doing it. And I think you're also involved in the, the SAC group at, at Winona State. Uh, how does that kind of help? Uh, that helps because you get to kind of meet other athletes and just like with friendships you get to build, but also uh, it's a nice group and you get to talk about uh, different parts of athletics and different groups. So you kind of get to see what other teams are going through and talk to other athletes such as like volleyball players to see how they go or use their uh, time for education and then getting extra work so it helps definitely having leaders on campus to be able to help you figure out how to use your time wisely all right and then uh, heading into uh, this week um, what do you what do you guys have to do to be successful this week against minnesota state and concordia uh, kind of like i said before defensively we have to string together 40 minutes um, both games and that'll just come from communication and talking on defense and then offensively just try to get a, everyone into a rhythm and move the ball and kind of have to um, break down the defense but it's mostly on the defensive end just making sure 40 minutes each game. All right well thank you guys for coming in and uh, good luck this weekend. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. All right and thank you for joining us here on Warriors Fast Break. We'll see you next time here on TV 25.